All right, we're back. 2023 NFL Mock Draft Simulator. This is your host, Trey Dauber. We're going to try to run through a bunch of these today because the draft's coming up and I'm running out of time. So if you see me in the same outfit, I probably did most of them today or some of them today. Anyway, today we're going to be doing the Los Angeles Chargers. I This is another team like the Vikings. I would, I'd love to root for the Chargers. Cool uniforms. I mean, cool uniforms. And I always have fond memories of LaDainian Tomlinson winning me my first fantasy league ever when the year he broke the touchdown record. So soft spot for the Chargers. I love those powder blues, but I mean, they're just choke artists. And as long as they employ Brandon Staley, they're a waste of time. So having said that, I mean, it's a pretty good roster. We don't have much to fix. Herbert's a hit. He's good. No complaints there. Offensive line's gotten a lot better, a lot better. Got weapons, they're aging, but there are weapons there. Even both linebackers, Eric Hendricks and Kenneth Murray, don't even have to worry about that. Two pass rushers, uh, Boza and Mack. So it's a good team. They're a really good team. What can we do to put the finishing pieces on the roster? And then having said that, when they decide that Brandon Staley's the dope and no longer capable of running this franchise, which most people realize by now, but... When ownership gets that in their head, the right pieces will be in place for a real head coach to take over. So I think that's the goal for today. Pretty straightforward. We're just going to do three rounds and uh, call it because this team's good. Not, the roster isn't the problem. The talent isn't the problem. The coach is the problem. So let's go over it. Let's do it. Chargers, three rounds. Let's get it. By the way, Tom Telesco, I mean, you can say that he's a fine GM if you want to go ahead, but I just have a real problem with the way that he does business in terms of coaching hires. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Seriously, how can you be an NFL general manager, sit there and be like, Anthony Lynn's our guy. Anthony Lynn was a fucking running back coach for 14 straight years has no clue how to run an organization, never renounced play caller, and you decided that guy was your fucking head coach. Then you said, oh, well, obviously that wasn't going to work like any fucking normal person would have. And then you hire some fucking idiot, Brandon Staley. He should have been fired after he kept putting Herbert in the game, that game that Herbert really hurt his ribs. What were you doing? And then the Jacksonville game. I just, I just... It's just constant anxiety with this Chargers team. Just Tom Telesco shouldn't have a job just based off his coaching hires. So you can say that he's put a fine team on the field, and that's correct, I guess. But I don't know. They're not one of the eight. They're not one of the eight. So. I think this makes our job pretty easy here. Ooh. We do have a trade offer, though. Two trade offers. Don't think we can risk it in a weak draft. I think this this pick is very easy. We're going to take Ringo again. Asante Samuel. Hey, uh, I remember all the people on the site that wanted to say, Asante Samuel, why are you taking him in the first round of the mock draft? Because he's fucking awesome. And his dad was fucking awesome. I don't know. These people are just idiots and they don't know how to run teams. Uh, if you pair him with Keely Ringo, we feel really good about our secondary. Especially at this point, we're counting on a healthy Derwin James. You have to. He's part of the team. Would love to find a better free safety than or strong safety than Aloe Gilman. But Ringo, at this spot in the draft, is an instant pick every time he's available. So we're going to take him. And if we can pair, listen, we already have the pass rushers. If we can put a good secondary on the field along with that, it's getting more and more impossible for Brandon Staley to fuck it up. He will. He'll find a way. He will find a way to fuck it up. But we're going to do our job at least and turn the card in there. We don't pick for a while, do we? <laughs> but, I mean, it's a strong roster. I mean, it's not like I have to collect a ton of assets here. 
I feel good about the guys that we're putting out on the field. So, something to keep in mind. We're coming up here, right? 54, huh? Okay. I mean, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. I just need them to get them to accept it. We're going to take this trade. For next year's third round pick to move down nine spots in this fucking draft. Sure. We'll do that all. We'll do that 100% of the time. We do have to find ourselves the right tackle. So that part's a little bit challenging. Can I look at the tackles that are available? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh is right. Cody Mauk. I don't know if he's a right tackle, though. Trent Pipkin stinks. I mean, he's the only weak spot on the offensive line. So I think that would probably be the smartest approach here to get solved. I don't know if it's in the cards. We almost feel like we got to do it. What's this offer? Add in that, dude. Here. Like, why? You know? Like, why? 70 is a little far. This pick's unnecessary to give up. It just is. Just give me the fucking third rounder and call it a day. How about that? Does that does that tickle your fancy? Good. Got the seventh round pick back. Go down from six to seven. Collect an extra third from the Chiefs. It won't be a good third round pick, but in that comp pick range, there's always good players available. So if you do if you do your job, Tupeloto is a good player. I don't mind. All right, I don't blame them for moving up there. Huh. Huh. Get off my screen. Wow. Okay. I don't know why that's there, but if you, I'm not willing to give up the seven. All right. Fuck it. We'll turn the card in. There's no other, there's no other tackles available in this draft other than Bergeron, who, who might be a guard. The fact that Jalen Duncan's going to slide this far, I mean, Warren McClendon, I don't know. I, I, <sighs> 139. I'm not even going to get to use this in this draft. So let's, let's turn the card. We haven't done this yet. Let's turn the card in here for Jalen Duncan. I'm not 100% sold on him, but I think his footwork's really good. That part is promising. And the fact that we're not going to ask him to be our left tackle, we're going to ask him to be our right tackle. So I think that's going to help him too. Size is on his side. He's not a small dude. He's not as big as, I mean, Pipkin's, his, Pipkin's arm length is ridiculous, but he's just not good. So I think this is the pick here. It's a bad tackle draft. And if you don't get your tackles now, you're going to pay for it. And, Pipkins is by far the weakest link on this team in terms of overall talent. The fact that we already moved down once, we collected another third round pick. And the the biggest thing here, he's just a good athlete. Like, I don't feel like I'm ever going to be in a spot where I'm asking this guy to do too much. Like, to, to have him as our right tackle can even slide it tight end, blocking tight end over there. We feel good about Rashawn Slater. Like, if I was just asking this guy, all right, you're our starting left tackle, good luck. The rest of the line stinks. I'm not sure he's going to pan out. 
I'm not sure he's that type of guy. But in the second round, pick 63, second round, I think this is incredible value. I think this is someone that can turn into a quality tackle for a long, long time. And we turn the card in. I think we've done our job here as the Chargers fan. It's getting harder and harder for them to screw this up. It just is. It's getting harder and harder for them to botch this thing. And we should be coming up here again soon. 85. One spot. One spot. One spot. We'll just take it. Next year's fifth. Fine. Wasn't going to take him anyway, so that's great. I already cheated, traded with the Chiefs once. I I don't think I'm going to do it again because I think there's a guy here staring us in the face. I mean, listen, at this point in the draft, how can we not take Keishon Butte? How can you not? How can you not? We're, we're the Chargers. Our goal right now is to build the best team possible we're doing Justin Herbert all these favors. We just got him another offensive lineman. Our offensive line from left to right looks good now. Slater, Zion Johnson. I mean, we've got some real guys here. Corey Lindsley at center. We got some real guys here. All we have to do is continue to build the right pieces around him. Quietly, the wide receivers are starting to age. I'm not a Josh Palmer believer. If you like him, fine. But it, there is no world in where Josh Palmer is a legitimate number one or number two receiver. He's just not. Butte might be. Butte might be. Mike Williams, good player, very inconsistent injury history. Keenan Allen, good player, starting to age. How about a mentor here? How about a mentor for Keishon Butte? Because he needs one. How about a mentor for Keishon Butte like a Keenan Allen? That's a long-term piece. That'll really fit this offense. We feel like we'll take care of them. We got the right guys in the building. The talent here, for my opinion, a year ago, I had him as my number one receiver. He slid in the draft. I know he's not much of a vertical threat, but this dude can make plays. His quarterback was an issue last year. I mean, he, he would have produced way more if that bum Jaden Daniels was on his quarterback. I like him. And these are the type of gambles that I'm willing to take in the third round. If Butte's there in the third round, we're going to do it. I pick 86. We already moved down a spot to collect an extra pick just in case we did fuck it up somehow. Turn the card. And I like our team. Tyler Scott. I mean, you're going to take fucking Tyler Scott. That's that Jonathan Mingo. That's the gap. I mean, Jaden Reed. All those receivers were coming off the board there. I didn't think we could trade down again. We collected some extra picks. Not necessarily that one because, I mean, we did get a, a this year's seventh from the Chiefs. So if you want to count that one, fine. But that's your Chargers draft. I mean, it looks like a good one. It looks like a good one. Is there some risk involved in this draft? Yes. We always live by the Chinese farmer philosophy. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I didn't interview these guys. I don't have that kind of access. Maybe Keishon Butte is just a complete scumbag and you won't make it. I don't. I didn't interview the guy. I hope that's not the case, but the talent in the third round at pick 86 in a receiver draft, by the way, that's not even that good. That's, an, that's another topic that we should talk about. This receiver draft stinks. It's a bad receiver draft. It, it's not like the Debo Samuel, DK Metcalf, AJ Brown draft where there's, a, you know, I can't, why am I botching this? McLaurin. McLaurin's there in the fourth round, you know? Not that kind of draft. This draft, it's a lot of gambles. A lot of gambles, no real top-end talent. To get a guy like Butte at 86 is just, that's the stuff. you. That's where dreams are made. We make sure we develop and take care of him the right way. 
how do you hate this? How do you hate this Chargers fans? How do you hate this Chargers fan? And we collected some future assets for when the real head coach takes over. We got some extra picks to play with. So I like what we did here today. I like what we did here today. But you guys can comment as always. Uh, thank you guys for watching. All these videos part of the War Room series on VendettaSportsMedia.com. Make sure to check those out. Peace out, Girl Scout. Mm-hmm.